Uh, all, everyone, all set to me. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, we'll get going and welcome the members here and the members online and Emer and Jane. So uh, we'll start off with item number one to confirm the minutes of the meeting of the municipal district of Ballymore Tubercory held on the 15th of November. Second. Councillor Green and Councillor Taylor. Number two, matters arising. Any matters arising? No. Number three, the adoption of the draft uh, multi-annual restoration improvement program 2022-24. I think Emer, yes, we can that. Yes, I am. Um, all the details were circulated to all the members. So it basically lists the roads for uh, 22, 23 and 24. And just very much in summary that in 2022, there is is approximately 40.12 kilometres at 42 locations. In 2023, there's 36.18 kilometres at 39 locations. And 2024, there's 35.35 kilometres at 37 locations. So I think the details, um, the lists of the roads and the associated maps have all been circulated. So it's just a question of adopting it. Thanks very much, Councillor Taylor. Just, uh, just look, just to <clears throat> to compliment and, and thank the the area engineers and the staff for the work that goes into this. I know there goes a considerable amount of work into these programs. And um, look, as always, Emer has outlined the amount of kilometres. Look, where that that is is proposed to be done, and where because obviously we're delighted with what's been done. We always want a bit, a little bit more, um, and. We will be, I suppose, it's up to us to lobby our our our, um, our relevant departments in 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 Dublin and headquarters, maybe to to keep the the funding at the level it's at and and, and increase it. So look, just well done, and thanks to to all the staff for the work that they've put into that. Councillor Queenan. Can't hear him. In the event of a road, we'll say this, uh, identify for year three, being deteriorating quicker than we envisage. Could a swap be done? In the, and we're talking about directly in the, old, in the in the same area. Now we're talking about something in Curry rather than Scorn. Uh, can, can that be? Can that be uh, accommodated? I think if all the members are, are in agreement, um, I think it can be accommodated. Yes. So long as you're not taking it from Tobago Valley, that's all right. <laughs> no problem. Oh, Councillor Clark. Uh, thanks, Sheila. Well, you don't know what it's like living beside Councillor Coyne, and he'd take it from under your eye. Look, uh, Emer, I wasn't able to open the ad door system that would was sent to. Could I get a hard copy of both the map and 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 the, and the list, please? I, I I don't know what I'm talking about. So, so yeah, no problem at all. No problem at all, Councillor. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would would it be possible for us all to get a hard copy? Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thanks. Anybody else? Can, can you hear? Look, just look at the. Uh, yeah, uh, Thank the area engineers for the work to put in, and I suppose the outdoor staff we have are excellent. And you know, we would all agree that certainly, if we got more of an allocation, we'd certainly spend it because we're all inundated with certain sections of roads that are in need of of upgrading. And unfortunately, for many years, we're playing catch up. You know, and you know, as as Emer has said, there certain kilometers in each year while it's very welcome we'd certainly love to be getting more but in fairness the the three area engineers were dealing with they're doing their best to try and i suppose put according to the cloth and do what they can but i suppose hopefully you know if this winter passes that it's not as bad you know that it'll 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 help maybe with the the, the slower deterioration of some of the roads but I think it's also welcome the the CIS and the LAS schemes, and I think we all, as a body, collectively have to keep lobbying for extra funding for that because that has been a great success in in all the areas, you know. So, um, and I think you know, again, when the weather is good, just to emphasise maybe keep the patchers out on the the roads as much as they can, and the um, you know the, the opening the culverts and getting water off the road is so so important because. That's what seems to cause a lot of the damage. But thanks for here. Look, Thank you, Councillor Mullaney. 
Yeah, sure. Just to concur with everything that has been said and to thank Emer and Tom Brennan and Tom Gilfeather and our area engineers and our road crews. And I think our road crews done extraordinary work at the, the time of the storm in, in early December. I know of one crew that done 23 hours almost straight with just a few short breaks. And I think that's the sort of work that's so vital. And, uh, you know, it meant that most people got away to work and trees were moved. There was an unprecedented amount of trees came down that time. And the, the efforts the done and the commitment to have is second to none. I just welcome all the roads um, in the area that has been included in uh, the 22 program. I presume it's the same size as last year's program and previous years. And uh, while every road I had hoped for is included, I'm hoping that uh, they will be included in subsequent years. Thanks, Kyra. Councillor Baker. It's just to concur with everyone else and <clears throat> something that I brought up before, and I think it's even more important. We won't be getting all the roads we need in, but we have to work smarter and getting the pothole and that done. And where I'd be coming from, and I mentioned it before, because a lot of our teams are only working with two, three men. And where you have three men, you have to have two doing, doing um, sort of traffic in that. So it leaves you that you have very little options there to get much work done. And where I'd be coming from, say, the last maybe 10 days, we had excellent oh, weather. And I, I know we probably... Can you hear it? Um, oh, uh, uh, I, I, I'd be saying if you were able to maybe specify, you have ways of reading why they're better now, that when the good weather was coming, that you'd be doing the pothole constantly, as you could be doing your drainage work on the bad weather, mm -hmm. and that you might be able to relieve, don't you know, maybe put two teams together and you get a lot more work, get a lot more work done. If you can hear where I'm coming from, because it's not as bad as going out and trying to pot hole on the weather bad. But if we could work what I call more smarter, and there is lots of way of knowing the, what weather is coming. So you, you take a notice, Christmas time it, it came, but if you could gear for that, that you were doing the drainage when weather is bad and that you'd be ready to go then. And I, I guarantee you, if you have stuff ready in that, it's amazing all the work you'll get done, done when the weather is good. Thank you. Thank you. I would also like to, to add my thanks to the executive and to the local engineers and uh, indeed the road crews for all their work and indeed in the storm, as Councillor Melanie says. Um, is everybody happy? Can I get a proposer and seconder for that? Was Councillor Taylor and Councillor Green and second. Uh, the motions, number four, Councillor Mulvey. Uh, thanks, Cahir. Look, yes, just on this motion, um, uh, I want to call on Sligo County Council, and I suppose on this I want to, to thank the, the council and the local engineer, Desi Sloan. Works have started on a, a footpath uh, coming out from the Grattan Street side of Valley Moat, out towards Ballinascaro West. Um, that's out on the, the Castle Baldwin Road out of Valley Moat. But um, I've been contacted by a lot of walkers and I suppose a lot of parents as well concerned because in, in, in this motion I'm calling on, if possible, to extend the footpath out maybe to the edge of the bridge. Um, it's not that awful far extra. There's a new development of a new house being built there. And I suppose uh, the old wall and the bridge, if, if the ditch could be taken away, the footpath hopefully could be incorporated along it. And there's a lot of people We'll say walk out that side of Valley Moat and turn left and walk up towards the lake in Ballinascarra. It's a quiet walk. And if the footpath could be extended out that far. But also in the motion, um, if a costume could be done on that, and if at all it could be included in a footpath program. On the opposite side of the road there, <clears throat> um, I've been contacted as primarily by a lot of parents with small children. There's um, an exposed river there, which can be flowing fairly high and fairly fast. And um, the bridge at that location, the wall of the bridge is almost down. Half of the bridge is almost down to the road level. Now, um, I want to thank, and I know um, the bridge in engineer Val Baines there late last year went out and looked at this for me. And 
while there is, I suppose, a discussion that I know some people use it for maybe washing machinery or that, I think maybe if, if the bridge could be built up and still leave access for um, if there are machinery to be washed out at the location or whatever, you know, but the fact that almost half or three quarters of the bridge is is down to foot level, you know, if a child or any person, any able person, person body, just put their foot in to let a car or a lorry or two cars meet, and it could be a detriment that someone could fall into the river. So the river is very exposed, and I know it's an old weir there, and it can be quite deep. And I remember years ago hearing of a, a fatality at it. So maybe if something could be done to incorporate <coughs> making the bridge safer, that it would d deter anyone falling into it or, God forbid, prevent a, a tragedy. Thanks, Gahirla. Councillor Mullaney. Yeah, I just in second in that proposal, I want to agree with Councillor Mulvey. There's a, uh, as you go out on the left towards Castle Baldwin, there's about 200 metres from the new footpath that has just been completed out towards the bridge. Now, I spoke to Desi Sloan, the area engineer on it, and the road isn't just as wide there, and um, there has to be a survey done on that. But I would strongly support extending that footpath out towards the bridge and repairing the, the wall of the bridge. Uh, thanks, Kayerla. Anybody else? Oh, okay. Did you just hear look on that? Did, did, were the replies issued on that? No. No. Well, here, look, just uh, just a short response here that these and, and as Councillor Mulvey has already outlined, these footpath works are currently underway and will be completed by the end of January as far as Balnascarrow Bridge. That is that good news, so that the footpath has come. I can take your word on that, Amor. That's good news. Well, I, I'm I'm not. I know. No. I'm, I know, not, I know, but, I'm not yeah. familiar with the exact location, so yeah, I don't know, yeah. is the bridge the same bridge that you're referring to, that it needs 300 well, metres, if there's a bit of feedback there, that there's 300 metres of an extension required. So I'll just clarify that and I'll ask the engineer to, to contact the members directly on that. Yeah, well, just I have put a call in to him on it and I know he, he was to come back to me, so it's just, I suppose, if... If it could be a costume could be got and a possibly that we could look at something because it is a very popular walk and route for a lot of people and if we could look at doing something maybe on the on the opposite side to make it safer i think it would be a welcome by a lot of people thank you um number five councillor Mullaney. yeah um i put down this motion to get um council support for um, a walk in Giva that had joined Giva village with the Miner's Way. Now the Miner's Way is a national walk and route and uh, very well used. And this walk from Giva village would take you along footpaths for almost half the way and through a piece of land where a farmer has agreed to give a walk along a river. So I'm just hoping for support from from the the staff and the members there to uh, to get this walk uh, registered and constructed. Councillor Baker. Yeah, I'd like to support Councillor Milani in that, and it's because it, it is a ter terrific area for walking, and it will be well utilised. And I think the fact that you have cooperation got from a farmer, it's Major plus. Thanks. You all, all happy on that? Agreed. Um, sorry, Imra's report. Kuhirlak, um, the proposed walking route referred to in this motion has been the subject of an inspection by Saga County Council staff, along with members of the local community. The route would provide an attractive and potentially important linkage between Giba Village and the Miners Way and historical National Way marked trail. The development of the trail would require landowner consent and agreement on the viable routing of the trail, in addition to the attainment of all necessary statutory consents. 
There may be opportunities for the local community to apply for funding to the Transitional Leader Programme for funding to develop this, tra this trail. And Sligo County Council can also keep the development of this trail under consideration for any future round of funding that would be appropriate. Are you happy with that, Councillor Mullaney? Yeah, I know I'm very happy with that reply and I want to thank Emer for it and the community is very much on board and any application that has to be done will certainly be done. Thanks again. Um, number six, Councillor Taylor and I'll second that motion. Could I just get a report please? You have one Eamon. Guard the station. Okay, yeah, to, to consider, yeah, to ask for an update. Pause. Yeah. Yeah, the proposal is to, I think, to write. To yeah, to ask for the, an update. Yeah, look, yeah. it's to ask for an update, and, and and I suppose, if 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 we could take number six and number seven together, this is, is asking for the same thing for the, the new healthcare centre for Tobacco and for the Garda station for Tobacco. I, I second both. We 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 know and we have been told that um, both projects are ongoing, um, but we just look like to see an update and, and know where they're at. Um, I think it's important. We've all discussed this before on, on a number of occasions for the Garda station in in Tubbukari, We know that the stations are now isn't fit for purpose. We've said that for a number of years. I'm not going to go back over all that again. Um, but just I believe the building is 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 purchased next door to the Garda station and um, it's uh, it's a it's a big building so maybe there will be proposals um for part of the building to be used for something else as well it could be proposals for government offices to be back in it again or maybe a passport office as councillor lundy um our one of our predecessors always looked for in tabakari um and i think for the health center i think the importance of this centre cannot be underestimated from the people of for the people of Tubbacurry and South Sligo. We see how well um, and how busy the health centre is in Ballymoat. So I think as a council and as councillors, we should keep uh, lobbying our respective TDs on both of these issues and keep them high up on the agenda in the Dáil and certainly high up on the agenda um, for this municipal district. Thanks, Councillor Taylor. Uh, I know from the the, the Joint Police and Committee that uh, the Clerk of Works with the OPW had retired and a new one was appointed in December. And uh, this was to be one of his priorities, the guard the barracks in Tobercory. Um, like the, the barracks that's in it, there's 11 guards and two sergeants in it. And sure, they wouldn't swing a cat in it to be truthful. So it needs, you know, the building is bought, so there's no point leaving it lying around. Um, Number eight, Councillor Mulvey. Uh, thanks, Cahir. Look, um, and I'll second that, Chair. <clears throat> uh, thanks. It, I think th th this uh, road, again, it's something I had been contacted, and I know I had it up on previous years, and I'm I'm happy to see that since I had put the motion in, that that road is in on the roads program for 22, because unfortunately, it was a road that. One section of it got a resurface in a good few years ago and the top half of it deteriorated and it's a very busy road with bringing all the, I suppose, the traffic in of the N17 there from Tabakurri, from Conry down, all that traffic tends to go in on that road there at um, heading down towards Temple House Gate. So I'm hopeful that that road will be done um, as soon as possible and when the weather permits. And I want to thank the area engineer, Desi Sloan. I have met him on this road and he has seen how deteriorated it has got. So it's it's certainly welcome. And I hope that there will be no another delay in getting it done in this year's programme. Thank you. Councillor Clark, do you want to? No, I'm happy that it's on the programme. I support the motion. Could, yes. could I, could I yes. just, Councillor Taylor? Uh, I, I'm also happy that it's on the programme. I, I think I think we uh, a number of councillors have been contacted about this road over, over, over the years and we all made representations to it. So I'm delighted to see that it's on the programme as well for 2022. Yeah, I would also like to, to add uh, that I am delighted to see it's on the programme. As, uh, as, as Councillor Taylor said, we have all been contacted about this road and it's great to see that it'll be done. Uh, that's, that's it. Uh, number 
Sorry, did you? Councillor Mulvey, number nine. I think I'd uh, number eight, sorry. Oh, it's number nine. Yeah, thanks, I hear it. Yeah, and thanks for uh, support on the last motion. Yeah, this is something just asking the council um, for an update on fit and directional signage to the National Mountain Biking Centre at Kalani off the main national primary routes, uh, primarily the N4, N17, and 59. Now, I, I know that there have been discussions with Quelche on this, but uh, since this National Mountain Biking Centre has opened, uh, I'd say Kalani has been a major success, but um, still, unfortunately, you're getting people that are, are traveling and the country is so small now that they're traveling from wherever, Donegal, Dublin, all Galway, all parts of the country. And, you know, signage to our recreational amenities is so, so important because, um, you know, people that tend to come down early in the morning, they want to know the, the right destination and the direction to it. So if I can get an update on that, please. Yeah. Uh, the Transport Infrastructure Ireland will be requested to provide such signs. However, details will have to be provided as to the nature of the signs and proposed locations. Um, okay. Th yeah, thanks, Cahirlach, and thanks, um, Ms. Cantanen, for that. Um, and look, uh, hopefully that they can maybe get some progress on that this year, as, as stated. It's, a, it's the only such facility in, in Connacht, and there's a huge attraction of people, right from small and young children right up to um, mature people. And there's also a lot of people that walk the fire road on it. So it's a great recreational amenity, and I think it's vital important that it gets the the sign agenda directional to, to promote it. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Mulvey. I'd like to support you on that motion too. And thanks, Emer, for that response. Uh, it's pointless having facilities like that if you cannot find them. So I think uh, signage is of vital importance. Uh, everybody okay on that one? Uh, number 10, Councillor Clark. Uh, is there is there a report on that? Yeah, email report. Cuhirlock, uh, the dunes and the strand were built as part of the Castle Cove holiday home development. The council have not received an application from the developer or a request from the homeowners to take this development in charge, and it is not the policy of the council to take in charge holiday home developments. A management company should be in place to maintain the public lights and other services. Councillor Clark, do you want to? Uh, uh, thanks, Imer, for that. And um, I suppose those estates were built now 40 years ago, I believe, in 1980, and uh, th they're all now fully uh, occupied by current and f residents that are full time in their houses. And uh, as I said in my motion, there, you know, they're in the light of, of what's happening in relation to uh, burglaries and, and attacks. On, we're we're losing you, Councillor Clark. Councillor Clark, if you move if you move your camera a little bit, my side. Or lose it, knock off the camera, sorry. Can you hear? All right, uh, the camera's off now, can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you now, yeah. All right, okay. Uh, I, I'd suggest, I don't know, Councillor Quinlan is there beside it, those estates, but I think we should have an overall view of the entire town of Innescrone in relation to those. They're all built 40 years now, and I think we should put some sort of a package in, in place to take the lights in particular in charge. I think there's only there's only four lights involved in those two estates. I I I'd like to hear what Councillor Queen has to say in relation to it. <laughs> Councillor Queen, I was around 40 years ago, Councillor Clark, when they were built. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, on a serious note, Chairman, it's, it's um, in this going 25 years ago was the forefront of building because of, because of the tax building holiday homes, and there was 400 units built in the town, and. Uh, the history of the whole thing was the developers got their got their bonds back after 10 years. There was very poor regulations. There was no managing company set up in all these states. 
Hence, the lights were never knocked on in a number of states. We had a number of motions done over the years from seven council talk about this. Uh, but now you see, they're no longer holiday estates. They're all long-term tenants are all rebought again, all these houses. And they all pay on their property tax and they feel rightly that they should, and there is a safety issue, that the lights should be put, knocked on. Now, there, it's, it is a very, going to be a costly exercise to deal with all this, I have to acknowledge. But um, we're a long time talk about it and there's very little progress. So I, you, you're suggesting, Emer, that we get a, a residence committee in place, is it? A management company, which is effectively the residence, yes. Right, OK. Well, Mr. Evan, Councillor Clark, we'll work on that. Go on. Support. But I just support the motion as well. We we we, we have we have been emailed as councillors. We, we've been e we got emails from 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 the state um, about what's going on. And, and look, we, we support Councillor Clark and we support Councillor Queen, and I certainly will um, in their efforts to to do whatever can be done here. So um, I mean, as a council as well, I I, I understand you, from your report, Emma, where the where the council lie on this, but uh, you know, I suppose if there's anything that we can do to help or to help a management committee, if they were put in place, then I think we should offer a hand to help them. To add my support to that as well, um, like lighting, lighting is a very serious issue in all these places today. Is everybody okay with that? Just, we... just to conclude, uh, uh, Chairman. Uh, I agree with what Councillor Queen has said, and I'd like to thank all the members for the support. And But I think we have to be proactive here now. I don't think we can go into another winter with those estates in darkness. And I think that the council have a duty of care to those residents because they are, they are paying the property tax. And a lot of them are elderly. Uh, and I think now we, we just can't, because the houses are built so long and they have changed ownership since they were originally built, uh, and because it was a part of a government scheme to have houses built, uh, you know, we can't just let these homeowners, which are some of them very elderly, that they can't really, uh, and one, one of those states is only six houses and the council owns one of them. And it's very hard for them to come together in a management board. I think we should get the actual council staff, the housing staff to be proactive here now and, and come on board and maybe to meet with the different sections along with myself and Councillor Queen, and we, we, we can't let it go on from month to month and year to year. I think it's very unfair. Chairman, thank you for that. Thanks, Councillor Clare. Put on your mic, George, I can't hear you on the... Who, who, what, what area? Is, is it enforcement section of the... But enforcement deals with the taking in charge. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, and I suppose the provision of public lighting um, is, is the road section. But the, the estates and taking in charge is, in, is planning enforcement. Right, okay. Councillor Baker. Yeah, we, we had a similar situation in our own town, but where um, I sympathise with people because when these developments was done, what happened, a lot of these developers went out of business and the ordinary 5-8 then, after paying big money, was left carrying the can. And I think if we could work at local level and maybe get a cost and to see how much would it be to or how many lights is involved and um, maybe to get heads thinking together, because I know in, in my own village there was a nice few houses involved and we got something sorted out nice and easily. But if we could do that, I think it's especially now it's very essential that uh, that people can be seen where they're going. So. Thank you. Everybody okay with that? Yep. We move on to number 11, Councillor Taylor. I don't know whether there's a re report or, or not. Oh, and if, great, if there is, yes. Um, Coherlock, um, I actually have a, a, a diagram in front of me which could be circulated maybe um, after, after the meeting. But basically, in summary, um, the roads are rated 1 to 10 and one being the worst condition and 10 being the best condition. So basically, if the rating is one to four, the road requires structural rehabilitation. If it's five to six, it requires surface restoration and seven and eight requires surface dressing. If it's nine to 10, the roads are in good condition. 
So basically, looking at the re the roads which need structural intervention, which are rated one to six, um, the length of local secondary in the area is 169 kilometres, and the length of local tertiary in the area is 297 kilometres. So that's 169 plus 297. And they are roads that are rated one to six, which require surface re structural rehabilitation or surface restoration. Thank you, Chair. I, I put down this motion, I suppose, just to, I, I, I didn't think that there'd be an answer to it as, as, as quickly. So I'd, I thank yeah, yourself and the engineers um, for, for their, their, their swift reply. I put down this, I suppose, just for ourselves as councillors to have a to, to know what's what's going on throughout the whole area. I know where we're, we we know where we're at in, in all our own corners, but just to know what's going on in, in, in the whole area. And when we're lobbying, I suppose, our government departments for money that we know the situations that we're in, because I suppose year after year we are we've been told earlier on in the meeting that we have 40 we have maybe a hundred odd kilometers of 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 road that we'll be able to look after this year and we'll probably have probably 30 or 40 kilometers deteriorating in the same year so it's just important for us to know the situation that we're in and i suppose we would say there's kind of three different three different areas too there's 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 the south there's the west and there's part of the east and um, but it's that's kind of, uh, I suppose, frightening figures that we're looking at there at the moment. Um, and I wouldn't have think, have thought that we were in that situation at the moment. So I think that tells us that our that we need we need more money to look after the roads, even in in our municipal area. I'm sure it's the same in others as well. So I think it's it's up to us, and we have a a duty to to try and and lobby the governments to to get more money for our roads. I think it's as simple as that. But I. I I would like to. I probably like if we could come back to this again, maybe in at the beginning of next year, just to see where where it's at, and maybe just to do a comparison on how the year has went. Thank you, Councillor Mullaney. Yeah, um, like Councillor Taylor, I regard these figures as frightening, and on the class three roads, we are probably not getting any attention on what comes from CIS funding. And um, if there's 30 or 40 kilometers a year deteriorating, it, it means that we're, you know, we, we have a huge problem ahead of us, a huge funding problem, and just something that will need to be assessed and dealt with in the future. Thanks, Councillor Mulvey. Thanks, Cahir. Look, yeah, and look, I suppose. Um, supporting councillor taylor on this motion you know it's 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 like as we said i suppose when we were adopting a road work scheme for this year or for the next three years and that you know that we are getting certain allocations but when you see the amount we have the most um class two and class three roles in the whole of the county and they're in south sligo and i suppose our municipal areas we all know stretches from you know, Ballyferne and down to to down to down to Nascrown and up to Balahi and it's a huge area. And when you see, you know, that you have almost, I suppose, four hundred over four hundred and sixty kilometers of roads there in need of surface rehabilitation and restoration, it's 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 a worrying fact. And it, you know, it's a case of our engineers and our outdoor staff and and the executive and they're trying to. To do what they can with it but it's to, to ensure that we get as much of these roads done as possible because as i said earlier the amount of applications i certainly am getting i presume we're all getting them regarding cis and the lis you know that it's frightening the amount of roads in the the rural areas that are deteriorating over the years and unfortunately we are playing catch up so i think it's finally you know this motion that we, we have an idea of where because we're all being inundated with people asking us uh, to, to get roads maintained and upgraded. So I fully support the motion. Thank you. Yeah, the the figures are a little bit frightening, all right. 
And just 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 before we leave it, um, Chair, you know, uh, we we certainly want to keep the allocation for our mun municipal area where it is. We want to increase it, but we certainly want to keep it where it is. And I think that that's also the importance of having this on the agenda. And um, you know that that we we would have more probably class two and three roads in our municipal area than there there are in the rest of the county. Never mind the other two um, areas. So. You know, I, I we would well. I certainly would feel that we need to keep it where it is, and that we're not losing any to any of the other areas. And I'm going to come straight out with it, and we need to increase it in every way that we can as well. Agree with you, Councillor Queenan. Yeah, I would agree with Councillor Taylor. And two fun number one, we also have the probably the worst terrain of the three areas, bad poor land, which is has one effect. And also, there's a perception out there, I've been mooted in here in this chamber that. Other areas are not being looked after as well as our area, and it's quite clear from them that them figures that we it's us that has the problem, not the other guys. So we we definitely are going to retain our our allocation. Well, we at least that in fact we'll be looking for a little bit extra next year. Thank you for that, now, Jim. Thanks, Councillor Queen. Yeah, can, can you send out them figures to us, Emma? Yeah. yeah, yeah, please do. It's good to have them. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Uh, correspondence? I correspondence. Yeah. There's opening of the health centres in East Keen and Sloan. They are open on, on, on two days a week, which is not ideal, but, but of course, it's good to get them up and going. And I haven't seen that correspondence, so could we just copy that correspondence to those from the HC? Yes. The next yeah. yeah. Okay. I want, I want, I want yes. to support Councillor Queen Queen in, in in what he has said there as well. And, and I'd like to compliment um the HSC and and the people involved for, for getting these health centres back open because they're they're vitally important to the people that use them. I'd also like to to support that because um, these centres, one of the lifeblood for elderly people in, in rural Ireland, and uh, they really look forward to that day. Let it be a care game and some to get their meals and all that. So it's great to see them starting up again anyway, and hopefully we get back to full, uh, full day opening again. Anybody else? In this? Uh, Councillor Baker. Yeah, I just like to compliment and especially the staff that's involved in all of these centres because talk about frontline workers and they're the, the core of it because the care uh, at the show and you can see it in in older people, the fact that they're able to move a little bit again, it makes a huge difference to them because a lot of people have got afraid in themselves and nearly afraid to go again and I think it it, it, it takes great trust from people to get, get that back into them. So. Well, very well done, and they're, they're a credit to the, the work that they do on the ground. And fair play to our older people, they're brilliant and deserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Queenan. Councillor Mullaney. Yeah, I want to concur with what Councillor Baker has said there about um, the people that run those centres, and um, especially the staff of CLASP and um, Ballymote, Tubbercurry and Gorchin centres. I have first-hand experience of the way Ballymote is ran and I think it's an absolute example of what can be done for, for senior citizens. Thanks very much. Thank you. Is that everybody okay with that? Um, schedule of meetings. Uh, we'll leave it to yourself and Jane. Right. Do you want to take down these numbers, these dates? Or? Yeah. That changes. Yeah, we'll do it as it happens. We'll be laughed. What just when is the next one, Mark? Yeah. The 21st of March. Yeah. What time? Can we fix Morning. the time? Morning. Huh? Just, just to ask. Yeah, just, just, just to, to ask. I think. At our earliest convenience, we should be looking at going to Chocolina. 
I 100% agree. If 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 uh, numbers are low, as yes, if we could go back to Charlene again, it would be great. And how, Jimmy? Jimmy, I suppose to ask you, Jimmy, how how are we up there for? There, there's no virtual meeting facilities in Chocolina, but we can look into it. Um, I think Chocolina is our base, this okay. municipal district's base, and I think we should be we should be trying to look to go back to it. Well, look, I'll, I'll I'll take that on and look into like there'll be costs involved, obviously, and 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 the, the, I suppose the main issue with putting virtual services in any uh, office now is uh, delivery times. It's the whole world is still. It's it's. Well, I suppose what what I mean too is that I would hope that we would be would be able to physically go back and yeah yeah you know you're talking two months to March you're talking yeah. another two months then after that I'd be hoping that. Well, I still think there's a need for the virtual option just for. You never know when someone wants to log in. So, look, if you if you could go back tomorrow, but you'd have no virtual. Yeah. Councillor Baker. Yeah, just uh, but if I can come in on that, I remember down in the complex in uh, in Sligo, I said that we'd have to look at doing things differently, and I think we'd be able to work it out among ourselves if we were if things does open up a little bit, that. If they were able to tell us what numbers we get by with, that we'd be able to work among ourselves, even mm-hmm. even if, don't you know, there might might be another space there that are some of us maybe might might be able to stay at home for one meeting if it if it was. But maybe at least have a look and see what numbers do you really need there, and uh, like the, the room we're operating in was a big enough room, so there's a, there there is a um. Uh, partition in that room as well that can be opened. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's possible. Yeah, yeah. we we we'll, we'll look at it. Yeah. Between you and yeah. would we fix the time for that meeting? Um, oh, well, the earlier the possible. Oh, yeah. Earlier possible. Yeah. But sure, I think I think we agreed before that we go every second meeting, like uh, morning and afternoon, every second meeting. So. Right. We can go for the morning for that one. If that's that, does that suit you? You're the chair. You shout. Ten o'clock. I'm easy. If it's in Chaplainy, it's dead handy for me. Joe Queen will collect you on the way. You'll be ten no, minutes late, but he collect you. Here, look, just my own thing on it is, look, that if we if we get a meeting in the morning and we get it over and done with it, it kind of clears the day for people then. But I, I look, I'll be flexible okay. with people. But, you know, at, at 10 or 12 o'clock meeting suits me fine. Or, you know, I just think if we go too late in the afternoon, it, 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 but I'm open, look, as I said, we've always facilitated each other on these meetings. But, you know, when if, if it suits, you know, some of the executives... 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Any other business? Chairman. Councillor Baker. Baker. I, I let Councillor Baker in first, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd just like to send a vote of congratulations to Johnny Kinney and signing for Celtic again. Johnny is an admiration of us all and shown the, the youth in every area, what can be achieved. And I think what's especially is good, the, the, the roots he has come from. Um, I remember to be his grandfather, Paddy Kinney, would have put Trojan work into the local club in Riverstown and got two of them are dead himself and uh, Paddy, Paddy Kelly. And I, I think it means a lot to a rural area when you see someone that is able to get such a sign and, and I wish him the very best of luck and there's no there's no decent or young lad that hasn't changed him one bit. He's the same Johnny as when he was gone at four or five years of age and he's an inspiration to us all and I think it's going to bring youngsters on hugely in every area to see that you can achieve. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Clark, were you trying to get in there? Yes, uh, I, I have an issue that I, that's important that I can't leave until the next meeting, and it's in relation to Drono West Community um, Pedestrian Crossing. We had a serious incident there. Um, a young lad was walking across and was pushing his bike, and a car in the Belnair direction came down and hit him on the pedestrian crossing, and it was a neighbour that hit him, and it wasn't reported to the guards. 
But at the time that I that I um, that I uh, that this, the pedestrian crossing was being put in, I asked that the pedestrian crossing be be rose up eight or nine inches. That would have to slow the traffic down. And the, the problem here is that the traffic coming from Balne is the issue is traveling too fast into the village. It's not it's not a difficulty from the Sligo side because there's this uh, Sinead's or this this place to narrow down the traffic and it's slowing the traffic. But from the Valna side, it's very dangerous, and this uh, this isn't the first uh, th thing. So I, I'd ask, you know, that maybe Emer would 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 ha have get it inspected and see if there any ways we could slow down the traffic come, come from Valna. And I also I wonder, James O'Toole was 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 a great man to come out and and take a spin around with us at time. I wonder would uh, Paddy Hughes be available for to come out and, and look at a few issues that we have because the local engineer is under pressure. Uh, in relation to bridges and in relation to roads and in relation to a few little access on the in 59 and for farmers and things like that. There were about seven or eight issues that I need an engineer to look at. But I have emailed Paddy, but I got no reply. Thanks, Chair. No, uh, Mark. That's fine. I'll, I'll talk to Paddy and I'm sure he will be delighted to come out. Correct. Yeah, could I just the trailer, could I just go back to, to, to Councillor Baker and just um just uh, and congratulating young Johnny Kenny as well um on his on his achievements and in, in signing for Celtic. I think his father is a, is a good Riverstone man and his, his mother is a is a, is a Tubba Curry woman as you know yourself, Chair. Um, and let's congratulate Shamrock Gaines, GA Club and Arrow Harps as well, and indeed Sligo Rovers on on the work that every, they have all done with him through the years. I think the biggest compliment I can give him is he plays with a smile on his face. And he's always smiling. And look at, I'd be, I'd be certainly asking him to to keep smiling and wishing, wishing him every, every uh, all the best of luck in the future. And I'm sure he'd be a huge success. Councillor Milani. Yeah, could I uh, second Councillor Baker's uh, fourth congratulations to Johnny Kinney? It's an extraordinary achievement, great for his local club and great for Sligo Rovers. And I know his father had a huge involvement in soccer, as did his grandfather. And I just wish him all the luck in the world. Councillor Mulvey, you want to come Yeah, thanks, thanks, Cahir. Look, and look, at just to, again, to, to, support the, the vote of congratulations for young Johnny Kenny. Um, you know, I went to school with his father and his father, Johnny, was a great footballer and, you know, I suppose just didn't get the, the, the chance maybe that a young Johnny is getting. And it's it's great to see a young lad at that age, you know, going to a, a world famous club like Celtic Football Club and, you know, a lot of young, my own young lads. And it's great to hear the talk amongst a lot of the youngsters and being at the matches on Sunday mornings and the talk is of the great, you know, um, attraction that this young lad is going to bring to, to Sligo and Tower Region uh, as being a footballer for Glasgow Celtic. And it's it's he's a great, he's a very level-headed young lad. And I hope that the success that this brings will will continue and help him progress and that he it will bring him good success. And it's, it's great for his parents and for his family and great for the, the Riverstone and that his club there. Um, you know that they have such a good young fella coming on and to be to be spotted and be brought over i think shows the the great exceptional talent that he is so the best of good luck to him good health thanks councillor mulvey i would also like to to be associated with that he, he's an example to every young boy and girl and that's what you need in this day and age uh, good leadership and good example thanks very much uh is that it everybody happy Thanks very much to everyone. We got through it fairly quick. Thanks to Emer and to Jane and Jimmy and all online. Good luck. God bless. Thanks, Cahir. Look, you kept them quiet in there today anyway. Thanks, Barbara.